Hello, everyone. First, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. Today, I'm going to share with you some recent results regarding the fusion between AI and the wireless networks. So here, the fusion is regarding two directions. First, AI can serve wireless networks. Second, wireless network can also support distributed AI. How do we design better interaction over such two directions in order to have a deep fusion? So this is the topic of today's talk. So this work is based on the contribution from many uh, contributors. So here is just a partial list. So for the wireless networks, cellular network is probably the most popular and successful one, which has been uh, experiencing from first generation, second generation, up to now, fifth generation. So now we are talking about 6G, putting expectations for next generation. Uh, we don't know what 6G should be yet. Uh, there are many features people expect to happen. For example, we want to see space, air, ground, sea, uh, integrated network. Okay. There are many other features being discussed. But the one common uh, agreement is that AI and uh, 60 must be deep field. Okay. So this is a common sense now. So the story between AI and the communication has been happening for a long time. Okay. At the real beginning, AI and the communication, these two communities are separate. Okay. They independently uh, design their own system almost without any interaction. But eventually, people realize uh, AI may help us to design better network, especially one traditional uh, optimization-based approach doesn't work. So this, but still, is stayed as a assisted design approach. Uh, most time, we design things offline and uh, plug in some blocks. Okay. Uh, then after that, people start to try locally uh, or in one of the layers in the network, for example for some online deployment of AI uh, algorithms, okay? But only locally. We don't see any global penetration of AI yet. But now we are starting to talk about the fully joined design, and we want to see some initial fusion between AI and, 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 and the network, okay? If you look into the future for 6D, we want it to be intelligent, which only happens if AI can be fully fused with the wireless network. So that's our future. So what do you mean by fusion between AI and the networks? So I understand this fusion in two ways. In one direction, AI can support to have a better network. So this is an enabling effect. On the other hand, network can also support AI systems. For future AI systems, which is complex, must be distributed, there must be network connecting different elements. So if we can design a better network, then we can have a better AI system. So this two directional interaction should be iterative. Okay. Then we can have a positive interaction between them. Uh, that's so-called fusion. Okay. So here is the outline of our talk. So today we're going to mainly focus on the two-way interaction between AI and the wireless networks. Okay. So for the first direction, AI supports networks. Before that, I want to talk about we must customize AI theory and algorithms to have a better support for AI functionality, for, fu for networking functionality. Okay. Then after that, we'll give you several applications where we apply AI algorithms to have a better uh, network operation. After that, we reverse. We'll talk about how to optimize networks to support AI systems. Okay. Then we summarize, and at the last, I'm going to talk about the open source problem. Okay. So to have AI fused with network, we must have the two communities talk with each other. We must learn from the computer science community where they do open source, which is very successful. So for networking researchers, we have to learn to be open. Okay, so I will talk about open source 
community we are uh, building now. So why do we need uh, network-oriented AI theory? Can we apply general or generic AI theories to solve networking problems or not? So from our experience, I want to say that blind AI deployment is not a good thing to do. Okay? If you apply generic algorithms to try to fit into the networking uh, scenario, it really doesn't work. Okay? Maybe the complexity is too high, or the execution efficiency is not good enough, or it burns too much energy. So all those things have to be considered. Uh, we have to think about what's unique about the wireless networks. Then we can do AI customization. Okay? Only customized AI algorithms will work well for networking problems. In order to customize AI algorithms for wireless networks, we have to know what's unique about the wireless networks. So here we focus on four unique properties for wireless networks. First one is distributed. Second one is heterogeneous, especially we have heterogeneous tasks over the wireless network. Third is high dimension. The last one is a complex model. Okay. So in the first distributed networks, uh, we'll emphasize to optimize the mechanism of much agent corporations. So we'll give one example output where we study the distributed uh, reinforcement learning techniques. For heterogeneous tasks, we focus on the exploration of correlation among heterogeneous tasks where we propose the Gaussian process learning approach to handle heterogeneous tasks. For high dimension problems, we focus on efficient processing of high dimensional data, then where we uh, propose a large scale point cloud analysis framework. For the complex model issue, where the resulted AI algorithm may have a complex model, we focus on how to efficiently reduce the model complexity. So where we propose a neural network pruning technique based on evolutionary learning. Given the time limitation, let's quickly go through uh, the four outputs uh, corresponding to the four uh, unique properties of wireless networks. First, distributed AI for distributed network control, uh, where we propose a multi-agent reinforcement learning approach uh, based on advanced voting mechanism. So why are we just trying to answer one simple question? Can we design a multiple agent reinforcement learning algorithm which converge as fast as a centralized one? So that's the key thing we want to address. We found that under certain conditions, indeed, we can design a good multi-agent algorithm which converge as fast as the centralized one. Okay. We established the, the theoretical guarantee we can where we can achieve sublinear convergence for this uh, multi-agent version. So here we also uh, have some uh, uh, real simulations to validate our theoretical results. Okay. The second uh, uh, illustration example is regarding the heterogeneous task. So when we have a heterogeneous multiple task, how do we efficiently explore their correlations such that we can utilize the computation resource more efficiently. So we found that the dependency between tasks can be modeled by using special kernels. So based on such special kernels, we can efficiently learn our multiple tasks where we can uh, allocate computation communication resource more efficiently. For the high dimensionality issue, here we propose a robust large-scale point cloud processing framework. So nowadays, we have uh, high dimensional data from different sources. For example, in autonomous driving, we have LiDAR, we have a millimeter wave radar. They all generate high dimensional data. Usually we use point cloud to process such data in a structured way. For collecting the large scale raw point cloud data, the noise cannot be avoided. Uh, during the sampling process, the single scan of point cloud data usually has issues with sparsity, time variant density, missing shape, and shadowing. 
So it's very important to provide an efficient, robust design for the large-scale point cloud processing model. So this is critical for future wireless networks to support advanced applications such as autonomous driving. So here we focus on two main challenge. challenges. First, how to utilize the correlation among different data scans in order to discover data features. Second, how to better use the prior shaping information to realize real-time sensing. So we'll go to address these two challenges and find the solutions and build a systematic framework. Here's our main approach. We build a joint framework of semantic segmentation and completion. We consider the features of outdoor large-scale data, take the free multiple scans of data to synthesis high-density large-scale data. We then realize the framework of semantic completion and the segmentation from a single view. We basically build semantic completion-assisted robust semantic segmentation by exploring the interactions between the point clouds and the work cell char characteristics. We tested our uh, algorithm over real data sets, uh, the popular semantic KITTA uh, data sets. So we showed that the proposed model has the desired robustness, especially for extreme sparse data, which has great potentials in applications such as autonomous driving, UAV control, etc. We also did quite well in uh, international comp competitions. So over uh, this KITDI data sets, uh, there is ongoing worldwide competition. So in two of the tracks, we achieved very good uh, score. Uh, one is uh, number three, another is uh, number one. For the last unique property for future networks, we focus on the complex model issue because uh, mobile device cannot handle really complex AI models. So we have to simplify the model after we train the neural network. So here we propose a neural network pruning, uh, pruning technique based on evolutionary learning. So we are trying to address three challenges. First, we want to avoid using the handcrafted pruning matrix, which is time consuming and not uh, sustainable. Okay. Second, we want to answer how to complete the pruning in a global way to achieve a certain global uh, optimality. Okay. Third, how to shrink the searching space in order to efficiently find the desired substructure. So our main approach is to build a neural network pruning technique based on heuristic evolutionary algorithm. First, we do direct priority population selection based on constraints. Second, we do, of course, block pruning, then we do a fine neural, net, neural layer pruning. We take a course to find two-step strategy. So with this uh, two-step two strategy, we can achieve a very efficient neural network pruning algorithm. Uh, the resulted pruning technique uh, achieved quite good uh, performance. We tested it on both large data sets, such as ImageNet, and small data sets, uh, such as CIFAR-10. So the results, the observations will provide guidance for real system deployment for future networks. So by focusing on two uh, unique properties of wireless networks, uh, we illustrated four examples where we customize the AI algorithm to fit in the needs of wireless networks. So now we are ready to talk about how do we utilize AI to support, to optimize, to control uh, networks. So, but when we do this, we have to keep several things in mind. First of all, when we apply AI algorithms uh, into part of the network, so can we get net gain or not? Because applying AI, you may also incur more cost, for example, energy. Okay. And also, even you can achieve gains locally, but we don't know whether we can achieve net gains globally. Okay. So if we cannot uh, verify this 
through theory, can we do system verification or not? Okay, using real systems to verify whether we can get the net gain, which are very important to make sure that AI indeed will help instead of uh, hurt the operation of networks. Okay, so that's the focus on this part. We first focus on applying AI locally uh, in local network layers to see whether we can get net gain or not. So our goal here is to fuse communication networks and AI algorithms. The key here is how to efficiently match between the AI algorithm and the variations of networking environments. So we pick four layers, uh, physical layer, access layer, network layer, and application layer. In the physical layer, our emphasize to find bottleneck in the conventional model-driven design and establish data-driven autoencoder architecture. So here we take a one example output where we design a deep learning-based autoencoder architecture for non-coherent communication scenario. For the access layer, our emphasis is to adapt to high di dynamics and lower the training complexity. So one example output is a distributed meta-learning-based UAV trajectory optimization approach. For network layer, we explore spatial, spatial networking patterns and maximize the expected rewards. So where we design an intelligent network control strategy based on deep reinforcement learning. For application layer, our emphasis is the dynamic matching between the network resource and the application needs. Where we propose a machine learning based smart video uh, catching strategy. For the physical layer problem, we focus on non-coherent uplink transmission scenario. So in such a case, users don't require much channel estimation information, so we can do things in a coherent way, which suits the large-scale scenario requiring small delay and a low energy consumption. In traditional approach, the coding correct complexity is high and the robustness is weak. So here we want to apply machine learning based approach to do the coding and the decoding. In our approach, we co combine uh, data-driven and model-driven methods. For the model-driven part, we based on the transceiver signal model design the autoencoder architecture. Then for the data-driven part, Based on the channel sample data, we further optimize the neural network parameters. Uh, with experimental results, we show that the machine learning based autoencoder can effectively lower the computational complexity of the non coherent transmission. And we lower the sample error rate and also enjoy strong robustness. So, in the access layer problem, we focus on the UAV trajectory control scenario where we propose a distributed meta-learning based approach. For UAV control, we know that UAV's travel time and distance are limited by battery capacity. So under such a hard energy constraints, optimized trajectories can provide better service for users. However, existing solutions doesn't cover the case when the UAV has no information about the user requests. So can we do a machine learning based approach or not to learn such information? So that's the key. So in our approach, we utilize the value decomposition to transform the centralized reinforcement learning problem to distributed reinforcement learning. Then use the meta learning to optimize the initial parameters of neural networks in the reinforcement learning framework. By utilizing value decomposition, each UAV can independently update individual value functions and the policy functions. So our simulation results shows that such a value decomposition based approach allows each UAV to independently train the reinforcement learning parameters such that we can reduce the training complexity. The adopted meta-learning approach can speed up the convergence of the uh, reinforcement learning algorithm. For the net Network layer problem, we focus on load balancing control for ultra-dense networks. 
So in after dense networks, the dynamics of user distribution and demands are likely to introduce substantial fluctuations of the traffic flow. And the low balancing is difficult to realize due to the high density of the base station and the large number of users. So we are facing three challenges. Globally, the mobility and the diversity of users results in significant traffic variation across different cells. Existing dynamic model does not fit in uh, ultra dense case scenarios. And existing reinforced learning method usually suffers from the curse of dimensionality. So can we design a new method? So when the users of base station numbers goes up, so we can collect more useful, useful information from them, such that the overall algorithm's efficiency can be enhanced. So that's our main goal. So in our approach, we propose a two-layer reinforcement learning architecture. So the top layer aims at dynamically grouping or clustering base stations. For base stations of the same properties, similar traffic variations will be put into the same cluster. Then the bottom layer aims at balancing the intra-cluster load distribution. So the proposed two-layer algorithm enables joint exploration with multiple behavior policies. Thereby, we can improve the learning efficiency and the st stability issue. So we can uh, address the dimension curse. Simulation results shows that the proposed two-layer approach uh, achieves very nice uh, performance. So in terms of rewards, uh, we can uh, gain a lot compared with the other existing methods. So for the application layer, we focus on uh, machine learning-based catching strategy for mobile video streaming. So where we uh, show that uh, based on uh, machine learning, the catching performance can be uh, dramatically improved. So we see that uh, locally in different layers applying AI algorithms, indeed we can achieve a lot of gain. But globally, what's going to happen? This is still an open problem. So local gains doesn't necessarily imply global gains. Because when we say global, it means that the algorithm has to be able to handle all spaces, all scenarios, and all time scales, such that the global parameter space will be huge. Sometimes it's too huge to handle. And the global time scales also have a larger variance. Okay. So now we may end up with the same dilemma we have about 20 years ago where cross-layer design is very popular in the research community, but uh, at the end, the industry didn't uh, really uh, deploy any cross-layer approaches. Uh, so are we going to break uh, this dilemma now for this uh, global AI control problem? So we want to apply AI algorithms across different layers to have global network control, but how can we do that? So I think now we are at different situation compared to 20 years ago. We have a lot of data, we have very superior uh, algorithms, and we have huge computing power. So the key is lying, how do we efficiently combine the three resources, data, algorithm, and the computing power. So if we can do it properly, we have a hope to break uh, this dilemma. Okay. However, this problem is open. And we don't know the answer yet. So uh, my group. So in order to verify when we move from local to global, AI indeed can give us net gain. So we have to test things over the global scenario. So we are building a test bed, including the access network, transmission network, core network, and uh, intelligent service. So over such a uh, complete networking scenario, we can test the AI algorithms uh, thoroughly to see whether we can get a gain or not. Also going to build a real hardware-based uh, systems to verify whether we indeed, in the real world scenario, we can achieve global gain. So this work is still ongoing. Uh, hopefully in the next, in the future talk, we can uh, give you more updated news. So in the previous section, we focused on the 
uh, uh, one of the directions in the AI network uh, interaction. Okay. So basically, we talk about how do we apply AI uh, to boost networking performance. So next, we're going to look at another direction. So how do we design better network to boost AI performance? So feature AI system is complex and is usually disputed. So the underlying network must be optimized to boost the AI performance. So by considering this direction, we can complete the closed loop interaction. So we have AI serves networks. Now we have networks serves AI. So in order to demonstrate how to design or optimize networks to boost AI performance, we pick a popular distributed AI system, federated learning as an example. So if we build a federated learning system over a wireless network, how do we optimize the wireless net network parameters in order to enhance the federated learning uh, performance? So here we focus on wireless connected federated learning system. Let's give a brief introduction for such a system. So we assume we have a U terminals, U users. Okay, they are all communicating with a base station, which is equipped, equipped with a server. Okay. So the U, U users want to have a globally optimal learning model, but they don't, they don't want to share their uh, local data with other users. So instead, they can share the locally trained model parameters. Uh, with the server. Okay. So this is a basic setup for uh, federated learning. So each user will locally train their local model, then up transmit the local model parameters to the central server. The central server do fusion and then broadcast updated global model parameters to all the users. And then next iteration uh, starts. So after uh, multiple iterations, hopefully, everybody will converge to the same global uh, learning model. Okay. So as you can see that when the uh, local parameters transmitted uh, wirelessly uh, between the base station and the users, bad things may happen. We may lose bits, we may lose packets. So we may uh, neglect some users due to wireless uh, channel connections. So how do we design such a wireless communication scheme in order to optimize the, our low federated learning uh, performance. So let's uh, look at how do we uh, optimize the wireless uh, network parameters uh, to support federated learning in different scenarios. First, let's uh, pick an extremely ideal case. So here we assume that all the users can, can be synchronized perfectly uh, at the base station, so such that the signals can be uh, mixed perfectly over the air. So in that way that we don't need each user to send the information to the base station sequentially. They can jointly send and do the fusion over the air. We uh, give the name for this scheme as the over the air computation. You can consider such a federated learning system as an extreme case. Uh, although it may not be practical uh, in real scenarios, but it can be used as a benchmark. Uh, for other uh, more practical approaches. So in this extreme case, actually, we can model this uh, problem as a nice optimization problem and get a half closed form solution. So here, the only variable we can control is the power. So we can get a almost closed form solution for the optimal power choice. So we can show that by optimizing the power allocation, we can improve the uh, detection uh, accuracy or the convergence speed over real data sets. Okay. So let's come back to reality, uh, consider some practical wireless constraints. Uh, for practical wireless, usually we do digital. Okay. For digital wireless communication, we have three parameters to control. The first is power, second is bandwidth, last one is uh, user uh, selection. So uh, luckily that even in this more practical case, we can still model this problem as an optimization problem and establish a uh, theorem regulating the convergence behavior. So we still can show that our real data sets, uh, we can have uh, again uh, resulted by optimizing such three uh, parameters. So let's go more practical where uh, we assume bandwidth is hard limited. 
So each time we only uh, allow a small subset of the users to particip participate. So here uh, we have two questions to answer. First, which subset to pick? Second, for the other users which are not selected, are we going to uh, just let them to be quiet in the current uh, iteration? Uh, can we utilize some historical data or not for those users who are not selected? Actually, uh, the answer uh, for the second question is obvious. We have to find a way to utilize the historical data. So that's the powerfulness of AI-based approach. Okay. So here we approach we propose an algorithm where we uh, do a random algorithm-based uh, user selection. So for users are not selected, uh, we utilize their historical data to do a prediction based on neural networks. So you can see that these two uh, parts of the overall algorithm uh, give us uh, two different gains. So overall, the total gain is quite significant uh, to improve the convergence uh, uh, performance of this uh, of this uh, federated learning uh, system. So we also uh, built a real hardware platforms to verify the algorithm. Okay, so we run the algorithm over the real uh, testbed to see uh, whether indeed we can achieve gains. So all the results have been uh, validated. Uh, let's do a quick summary for this part. So we show that uh, when we design AI algorithms, we better to incorporate network features and utilize networking domain knowledge then the overall AI performance can be enhanced. So we use several examples to show that network optimization indeed can boost AI performance and make it necessary that in the future design of computation intensive systems, network optimization must be jointly considered with AI algorithm implementation. So, so far we have talked about uh, the two-directional two interaction between AI and the networks. First, we saw that uh, if we have customized AI algorithms, we at least can locally achieve gains. So whether we can globally achieve gains or not, uh, it is still being an open question. But on the other hand, uh, network for AI, if we can design and optimize networks, indeed we can improve the AI performance. So this two-way interaction positively iterate, we can have a very good fusion between AI and the networks. Okay. So in order for this uh, direction to booming, okay, to develop fast, so we have to learn uh, from the computer science community. So why that uh, AI or machine learning community uh, has been uh, developing uh, very fast in the past few years? So one of uh, thing is open source okay so in recent years i have been participating in uh, this community uh, we see that the way they do research are different from uh, the research the, the way we do research in the communication community okay so in our community usually uh, we design an algorithm we just keep the code the data to ourselves but in the machine learning community for each paper you publish, you have to open source the code and data. So everybody can access the code and the data to, to run, to verify, and to improve over the existing code. So in such a way, the whole community is go moving forward quickly. Okay. So I think we need to learn, we need to encourage sharing and interactions. Okay. So open source is a good way to do that. So now we are building an open source community uh, based on the Pengcheng Laboratory uh, platform. So here we uh, focus on three uh, directions in this AI plus night community, so, which is already being established. Uh, so we have three areas. First is AI for networks. Second is networks for AI. The last one is uh, the, the basic AI and the machine learning uh, algorithms. Uh, customized for network applications. So uh, now, uh, besides our own group, uh, many other groups already uh, participated. We have a uh, quite rich uh, resource for uh, different computer codes and the data regarding the three areas I just mentioned. So we are welcoming uh, all the researchers in this uh, exciting 
area to join us. Okay. So here is a way to join. Uh, you can send the emails or you can scan the code. So uh, hopefully we can build an active community where we can help the community to gain access to uh, more data and more uh, open source codes. So everybody uh, can uh, work on the shoulder of others. So the whole community can move forward quickly. So thank you. Uh, that's all I want to say about this talk. Uh, any questions are welcome.